Richard Ingram, and there's Tony Prevatero, the podcast master, right over there. Lafayette was the nation's guest. He was on the farewell tour of America 200 years ago. And September the 2nd, he found himself in Boston. Lafayette had a limp left leg. Everybody assumed it was because of a wound that he suffered at the Battle of Brandywine. A musket ball through the left hand, through and through, September the 11th, 1777. But it wasn't. He didn't get that limp from the wound then. He was in Paris on February 23rd, 1803. He was 45 years old at the time. He was not paying attention. There was a sheet of ice on the walk. He slipped, fell, and fractured his left hip right at the neck. Well, his physicians, Deschamps and Boyer, were concerned that if they didn't splint that leg, that Lafayette would have a shorter leg than the other, and it would really be a disability for him. So, Deschamps and Boyer recommended that he be in this contraption. It was something new that they had designed that put him in a splint for weeks. When he went, and it was incredibly uncomfortable. And when he had completed wearing that splint, he still had the limp. His leg wasn't any shorter, but he could no longer mount a horse. He had to travel by carriage. It was an inconvenience, a disability, but that's where he had his left limp. He finally just got tired of explaining it. Folks just assumed it was because of the wound back in Battle Brandywine. Lafayette and his son, George Washington Lafayette, and Lafayette's secretary, August Levasseur, they traveled together, those two and Lafayette's valet, uh, Bastion Wagner, just, he gets little attention. But they helped Lafayette get through this farewell tour. They were in Boston, September the 2nd, and they traveled down to Hartford, Connecticut. Now, if you go straight down I-84, you hit it. They had a reception by Governor Wolcott there before boarding the steamboat Oliver Ellsworth. Traveled down the Connecticut River and then into Long Island Sound, and they docked at Fulton Pier. Lafayette stayed at City Hotel there in New York City. He visited Columbia College on September the 6th, celebrated his 67th birthday. And two days later, he boarded the Chancellor Livingston a steamboat and steamed out to Fort Lafayette. Fort Lafayette was a fortification on the Brooklyn shore. It was completed in 1822. There was Hendricks Reef right off the Brooklyn shore. The fort was christened Fort Diamond, but in 1823, a year before Lafayette came on this farewell tour, the fort was renamed Fort Lafayette, and it was known as the American Bastille. Benjamin Harvey Hill, from here in LaGrange, Georgia, his home is Bellevue, that the dawn of the American Revolution now supervised, spent May through June in prison, 1865, imprisoned at Fort Lafayette because of his Confederate sympathies. The tower of the Brooklyn side of the Verrazano Narrows Bridge replaced Fort Lafayette in 1960. Go figure. Lafayette, LaGrange, Benjamin Harvey Hill triangulate at Fort Lafayette. Till next time.